You're awesome. You took your responsibility seriously. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so thank you all. Hey, Joseph. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. How are you? Nice to see you. Yay, people are strolling in. Look at She's finishing something. Okay. How are you? Um, okay, perfect. So I am super excited to see all of you. We have some great information today. How are you? My hippy dippy, thank you. I love being hippy dippy. Yeah, so I, I might as well just put it out there already. I'm gonna say it now so I don't have to. Uh, you know, we all go through different changes in life and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's so weird because like we get moving, 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 and da 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 da. We're in our hands well. And sometimes we reflect, and sometimes like I'm super close with my kids. And two of them are like moving away. I keep them in my little nest, right? So now I'm just like, hey, you should have time in, huh? Did you add some that's why Leave it there, yeah. right? But it's, it's super exciting. It's one of those bittersweet things. So I just found out last night that my son uh, got incredible job opportunities moving in Northern California. Wow. It's still like right here, but it's not like, you know, and I told, I haven't told Bree yet, but I'm telling you right now, you can't move. <laughs> <laughs> You're staying put for a while. Beautiful. Yeah. And then Bree, uh, or Brittany's moving to Long Beach. So helping her find her place, even though it's in the backyard. You know, but still, it's not one of those things like, hey, I can, let's meet for dinner real quick. Let's meet for a drink real quick. Oh, let's do this, da, da, da. So now I just have to plan things differently. But anyway, I was just like, so emotional on the way here today. I'm like, oh my God, okay, I have to work through this. I'm going to share with you. And then so I don't cry. Okay. <laughs> but it's so fun. But I have, you know, we all have our family and that's my, you know, my kids. And then you guys are all my family too. So I appreciate each and every one of you. So you guys can't move anywhere anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Just wanted to throw that out there. But anyway, it's, but it's just enjoying the journey, right? Enjoying the journey and just having fun along the way. And some of it is so great. And some of it's like eh, scary. You know, when I was talking to Landon last night, he's, he's, terrible, he's, he's scared, right? You know, but he's super excited. And getting goes long, getting out of my comfort zone. It'll be interesting to see where this journey takes me. And, and that's, you know, that's what it's all about with each and every one of us. We have no idea what um, what how our journey is going to be, right? We don't know the people that we meet, the people that we encounter, you know, just having conversations. And that's why it's like when you guys are out there prospecting, right? You never know if you're meeting your your best new client or meeting your best new friend or anything like that. So that's why, you know, just be curious when you're talking to people. Just be curious. Take the pressure off yourself that, oh, I'm selling, I'm da-da-da. Yes, you're selling, you know, and you have, you're taking care of people, but take the pressure off yourself just to be curious, but not just to be curious, right, about the other person, right? And that's where you become authentic. That's where you, where they know, God, this person really cares about me, right? Because remember that bold law, right? People don't care about how much you know. No, yeah, until they, until they know how much you care. And that's the same with anything. So really just be um, just be authentic, be true to yourself. And then that allows you to embrace and open up for even more business and wonderful people to come into your lives. There you go. So I don't, I just thought I would share. <laughs> All right. So who don't, Steve Sachs, get your ass over here. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. Here is our quote of the day. Will you please read it and share what you what it means to you? You don't allow people to dim your shine because they're blinded by it. Tell them to put sunglasses on. Lady <laughs> Gaga. Absolutely. So what does that mean to you? Don't let shitty people fuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
Right? Is that a little, were you guys not used to this kind of word around here? <laughs> Yeah, but it's true, right? Just because of a baby out of the comfort zone of other people, just go do you. Do you at the highest flipping level that you can, right? And if other people are uncomfortable by it, it's on them, not you, right? So that's why we always go to environment matters, you know, just keep being your authentic self, just go crush it and have, you know, follow your dreams and just. Just, just knock it out of the park and crush it, like Philip says. All right, thank you, Steve, for your words of wisdom. <laughs> okay, congrats on your first closing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just congrats. Yay! Yeah. Hey, there's nothing more exciting than getting your first check back in. Okay, and there's nothing. Uh, more exciting than getting your second check. <laughs> and nothing more exciting than getting your next check or the hundredth check. <laughs> so funny. One of the things that I always share with the uh, with the staff, right, is our number one priority is not uh, is not the agent. The number one priority is the buyers and sellers. The number one priority is the money. <laughs> If money comes in, there's no nothing more exciting for the agent to go, is my check ready? Is my check ready? Right? Oh, do I have my check? And even like with Alejandra, when I have like a referral fee coming in or a check, I'm like, my check ready? Please tell me for because it's just fun, right? It's it's the game, it's the excitement of the deal. It's so much, you know, all the stuff that you go through, and then all of a sudden you're just like, wow, well, that's you know, your reward. We don't get paid on every, you know, the 15th or the 30th or da, 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 you know, we, those are our paydays. We define our paydays and determine when we get paid, right? So that's why it's so fun when, when you get your, it doesn't matter what closing it is, right? So congratulations again, Jessica and Chiquita. So we have a gazillion birthdays. So whatever happened nine months prior to May was a busy one, right? So happy birthday to each and every one of you. Super, super exciting. And then we have all our anniversaries as well. So we appreciate each and every one of you with your dedication and commitment to our office and Keller Williams. So thank you, thank you. And we have a special happy birthday to our very own Miss Alejandra. I said we appreciate you immensely. Thank you for your dedication, hard work, and her official birthday tomorrow. But she's not here tomorrow. <laughs> so we're giving her a little surprise today. All right. So I have to tell you, we are kicking some bootay, right? We had great, great closings and a great month uh, last month, and it's still ramping up. And we're going to have a great May as well. So that is all attributed to each and every one of you working hard, right? You are working hard and, uh, and allowing that momentum to take place. So all of this stuff is because of all the hard work you did 90 days before then, right? So just keep doing what you're doing. Like we've been talking about, um, take advantage of what's happening right now, right? It's still a crazy market. It's still, you know, inventory is interesting, da, 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 but we have, you guys all here have been doing your job and taking listings. So since February, each and every month, we have doubled the listings taken. So congratulations to you all for that. So Kristen, Phyllis, Sohela. Okay. I saw her. Oh, there you are. Okay. 
Uh, Susie, Ani, Team Selig, uh, Team La Familia, Pam, David, Denise, Eileen, Dave, Chiquita, Samantha, I mean, on and on and on. So congratulations. It's awesome. Okay. And then also welcome to the family. Okay, we have Rania, Annabella, Angelina, Stephen, Denise, Jackie, Jaspreet, Tanya. Woo! So just getting some world-class talent in here. It's awesome. Awesome. And then, you know, like I said, if any of you know of anyone that's, you know, looking to move or looking to get in real estate, just please let us know. We'll have a, a chat with them. Oh, and there's Jackie right there. Where's Lexi? Isn't she sitting at you? Yeah, she's doing an open house. Oh, uh, okay. So Lexi brought her in. So super excited for each and every one of you. Okay. Just uh, some dates that are coming up. Again, August 15th, 16th is Mega Camp, uh, Ford Living Group Dinner. We always have it uh, usually the first night. Uh, we're trying to figure out which date. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll give you the date in July for our family picnic where we always have Michael Cochette, the water fights. Oh, so it's super fun. And then October 11th through the 15th in the Bahamas and December 14th, it's a holiday party. Is that crazy that I'm already telling you about holiday party? <laughs> I mean, we're all, you know, so it's like I told the gals, I go, we have to soak it down the next six months because it's here, you know, so we want to have makes a little bit of fun because remember you always, I mean, it's not like y'all look for, I mean, do we have to take gas holiday party though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was a very enthusiastic. <laughs> but um, we do have some fun for sure, but you guys always want to have something to look forward to. Right, always have something to look forward to because it makes the grind go by so much better. Just like uh, Mr. Cochet just got back from Havasu. Wow. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So he had something, you know, always have something to look forward to. And, you know, as we know, real estate is a lifestyle for sure. Okay. I know Philip Crispino, our amazing ATL. <laughs> Uh, I don't have so many different ones floating around. Yeah. So uh, he has some great stuff, words of wisdom to share. So, Ooh. Philip, come on down. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, Jess and Chiquita and everyone on board. Um, it's fun to get to share every so often on things that we get to pick up. Um, literally, you can, you know, take any of your notes from when Mike shared or when Steve back to share or when anyone in this room has shared. Um, and literally, those are my notes, right? Like it's a rehash, it's a consistent rehash of things that we already know that we hear on a consistent basis. And then we just hear it differently from another person and then off we go. Like I invest in coaching and all this stuff. And I'll go to my wife, Monica, sitting back there saying, ha ha ha. And I'll tell her this amazing thing I learned from Jacobus or from Stephanie or whoever. And then she's like, MF or I told you this like a year ago, <laughs> six months ago. And now you finally are putting it to good use, right? So like I come back from Mega Camp and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, the one thing I picked up is events and we got to start doing events and we're going to start doing them now. And she's like, dude, I've had that on the board for like five years straight and you spent thousands or whatever it was that we invested to go there to come back and say, Here, here's, the, here's the tablets, right? We're going to do it this way. And I bring this all up because everything I'm going to share with you is nothing new. I just hope that maybe however it comes across with life happening and the events that are happening in our own individual worlds, that they hit differently, right? I don't swear like Monica or Mike or Steve Sachs. So that's one piece that's missing. Because I learned that when we were doing forward mindset, there were kids in the car, right? So I stopped swearing. And I was like, oh man, they're duh, Philip. Everyone's taking their kids to school. So I better watch my watch my tone. Um, so I wanted to share some notes with you guys from Mega Leadership Camp. I'm going to go through this whole book in nine minutes or less. Kidding. <laughs> um, but one of the big takeaways from that book was looking at your personal and professional development calendar, whether it's in the office, whether you're leveraging things from sport, living, from SRAR, Conejo Valley, wherever it is that you seek your training, is your training calendar removing fear from your life, right? Fear comes in different ways. Like I have a problem calling my family and asking them for referrals. 
right? So what was the one way that we overcame that? We started creating events. That was a big aha. And we started inviting everyone in our family and friends to these events. So now I can talk about being a realtor without asking them to know me as a realtor. Hey, we have this awesome event. It's about fill in the blank. In this case, the big ticket event, golden ticket. It's about living trust, setting yourself up with the best um, tax um, benefits at your later age, how to use Prop 19, how to use reverse mortgages, how to work with a financial advisor, living conservative, conservative, living trust, all that stuff. So I can bring that up, blame the events for why we're inviting them to this event. When they come out or not come out, they know me as, wow, Philip's a great resource. And he happens to be my nephew, right? And so now there's these pieces where my fear can be removed because of something on the calendar, right? Now, if you have a fear around understanding the market of the moment, and let's say wherever you're at, you're not, you know, you're not getting all the stuff, plug into podcasts, right? What was it when, when Mike was up here sharing? What's the ideal inflation rate that the government wants to keep us at or Federal Reserve wants to keep us at? And Alan said 2%. And I, I felt smart after that because I was like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know the answer. <laughs> Peak gas price under five bucks is kind of like the California standard, right? Or now it's under six bucks, so five dollars a deal. But I learned something about the market at that point, and the advantages of learning and training and studying is that immediately call five people, say, "Hey, Jess, I just learned something new about the inflation rate that the government wants to keep it at two percent. So we expect these interest rates to go up until that cost comes down. Hallelujah! What does that mean in real estate? Fill in the blank." Right. And if you don't know what that means for real estate, look at the market of the moment, dispel the fear and see that more houses are being absorbed quickly, depending on where you're at. And, you know, not all markets are the same, but they're being absorbed in less than six months. So we're technically still in a seller's market. Right. There's still those opportunities there. Another thing I highlighted here, when the markets change, the fundamentals become cool again. Right. So if the market has shifted, pivoted, whatever you want to call it, fell off the cliff, gone up through the roof, or whatever perspective you're on. All of a sudden, when those markets change, all of a sudden talking to 10 people a day is like the coolest thing ever, right? Sticking to the fundamentals, making base hits. You know, we, my, our son's playing baseball now, so it's a whole new dynamic of learning. I never played baseball. I tried out for the team and quit. I'm a quitter, right? And I'm a, re, I'm a re, recovering quitter, as like the alcoholics would like to call it. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm a recovering quitter. And I bring that up because their whole goal was to just hit the ball, get on base, guys. Don't go for the home run. Don't try and steal third. Get on base and then get the next guy off of first onto second. What does that mean in real estate? Our net plus one, meaning like adding one new person to your database every day is us getting on base. If every day you went out talking to five people, 10 people, Mike had a really cool homework assignment, which was talk to, I think it was like five people to have a conversation with them and then tell me how it goes a week later. I don't know if anyone actually took them up on that homework assignment. I, I, I personally didn't. But if, if you can be accountable to somebody where every day it was the goal was one new person added to your pipeline, whether you're using command, using a notebook or a spreadsheet or whatever it is, that you're adding one new person who said, yes, my name is Philip, and I plan on selling my house on this date. And you added one person every day over the course of 90 working days within six months, you would have 90 people who said, Hey, I want to buy this date. Hey, sorry, I want to sell on this date and buy on this date. There's no freaking way you wouldn't be so busy that you wouldn't know what to do with your time, right? Now, and there's a whole other thing around that, but I'll, I'll stop right there. And one of the, another one of the fundamentals is having a, a schedule. And I'm going to go into something that sometimes we may forget about, um, and it's our. See, we come on to that page. It's the Keller Williams mission, vision, values, belief systems, and perspectives, right? Mission statement is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leading. If you have a difficult time creating a first domino, right? When we talk about fundamentals, the fundamentals just isn't our day to day. It's also how we wake up in the morning, how we think, how we go to bed, as Stephanie puts it. And if you can't create a mission statement of your own, think about your life through this lens. What's a career worth having? Why do I want a career worth having, right? If you go backwards, it has something to do with either yourself or those closest to you, right? If I were to peg out my closest five, remember those old T-Mobile commercials, who's your top five, you can call them for free? You know, that was like a 2000 wow, thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the zone, right? <laughs> and I was like, high school. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Good crap. Didn't have, a, didn't have a cell phone until like I started college. Um, but your top five for me would be my wife and our four kids. 
I always ask the kids, hey, who's dad, who's, who, who's my priority? And they learn to say me and my siblings, depending on who I ask. And now I've added mommy to it. So that me, my siblings, and mommy. And I've added another one, said me. Right, got got to be alive in order to like you know make it right. <laughs> so to enjoy all all the fun stuff. So now the career, and what does it mean to have a career? Like it, when we were at Mega Leadership Camp, um, Gary broke down what does it mean to be a servant? What does it mean to be productive? What does it mean to be a leader? And there were su super simple answers, right? Leading others, working with others, um, being of service to others. It wasn't you know big giant stuff. But when we think of having a career, if we were to go to college and Monica and our dropouts. <laughs> Right, well, quitter, right, recovering quitter, as I like to call it. Um, if I had a career in nursing, I would have to go to continuing ed at some point. I'd have to new, know the new EpiPen, the new ways of, of drawing blood and administering medicine and all sorts of things. So when you have a career worth having, that is that is basically constant, never-ending improvement. When you own a business, when you have a business worth owning, what does that mean? You have extreme ownership over your life and over all those that encompass that business world. Right? Are you blaming escrow for paperwork not going out in time? Are you blaming the other agent for lack of communication? Are you so many things we can put the hat on and blame that we don't blame ourselves? The moment you take ownership in something as simple as that, oh my gosh, the deal becomes so much more easier, right? Lives worth living. What's the purpose of the of business? It's to fund the perfect life, right? And that is life on your terms. For some people, they literally need a million dollars a day, right? For others, Man, I can make it on 100 bucks a day, right? Whatever that number is for you, define it so that every day you get after it, there is a finite number that you're trying to accomplish. We call it our financial independence number, right? You ever talk to a financial advisor, talk to a coach, a consultant on, hey, how do you build wealth? Know what does it mean to be financially free today? I don't need a billion dollars to be financially free. I just need $15 million. But the moment I got very clear on what $15 million meant, it meant that at a 4% return, if I didn't have real estate, that would create $600,000 a year, $50,000 a month. $50,000 a month gets us to wherever we want to be and do, right? Wherever the kids are at in the world, as they get older and do their thing, we're not calling them, hey, Max, you know, your business is doing well. Can you hook me up with like a grand? <laughs> you know? Can you sell me a thousand bucks or whatever? You know, we were there with our parents, you know, totally broke and gone to real estate. And we can remember a time when we had no money for gas, no money for food. We were on WIC, thanks with our kids, welfare, and our parents supporting us. Not fun. You know what, though? That's just part of our story. We embraced it. We fell in love with it. And you know what? We were doing our best to, to make dues on that every single day that we get in real estate. Because the hardest thing that happens here is someone telling us no. Or even worse than that, which is not even bad, is an escrow canceling. We have two of those canceling. And I'm thrilled. You're like, Philip, you're on crack. <laughs> What's going on? Not excited about that. But there's always good in the things that are going wrong, right? That is the quintessential piece. Experiences worth giving, legacies worth leading. Our belief system, our vision is to be the real estate company of choice for agents and their customers. Our belief system, win-win or no deal, integrity, customers, commitment, communication, creativity, teamwork, trust, equity. Our values are God first, family and business. Business always finds a place to fit. Our purpose to be the place where entrepreneurs thrive. Keller Williams thinks like a top producer, acts like a training consultant, and focuses on all activities on services, productivity, and profitability. Right? I'm going to jump over because I think I'm running out of time. And this is the biggest takeaway. And then when we started this idea, one of the ideas here was when the market changes, the fundamentals become cool again. This is called the six personal perspectives. At the very top is called commitment to self mastery or commit to self mastery. And why is that? If you read the one thing or any book on personal and professional development, if you solve your own problems, it's called personal development. Hey, congratulations, you're no longer a quitter, right? Or whatever you're, you're working through. Um, when you solve other people's problems through professional development, now you're a business, you're being paid professionally for what you do. So if you solve your very first big domino, which is whatever it is you're going through, like mine kind of had a fight this morning, you know, game face here, boom, like, like Stephanie always tells us, hey, put your game face on. I, I think you said that to me or you said it in the general direction. I was like, dude, she, she sees my, like, my, my dad face or something. But um, the, the point of that is once, once you realize that you are the center of your happiness and the center of your sadness and the center of whatever it is that we're going through, nothing, nothing gets to you, right? If your goal is to talk to 20 people a day, talk to them. Cool. Awesome. 
get better along the way. Because commitment self mastery says, where can I improve? Where can we optimize? We can't wait for someone to show up and motivate us. We can't wait for the right client to come. Like a baseball coach says, there's never a perfect pitch. You just got to swing, right? That pitch will come. Yeah, some of them are aiming for your face. You, you better duck, you know? You, you don't want to take one in the face and then walk the first, right? You know, so either you're going to take it or you're going to dodge it or you're going to swing and hit that dang thing. Or like the coach said, go out swinging. Hey, it's okay. You're, you're not going to hit a thousand, right? In real estate, in baseball, what is it? You hit 300, you're in the Hall of Fame, right? Three out of 10, you failed seven times not getting on base. You know, people booing you, whatever. In real estate, if all you did was three out of 10 every day, like, holy cow, you'd be stuck in the top of Do you think she's going 10 for 10 on phone calls? She's calling past clients or telling her no. You know, hey, I'm working with, with Jocelyn now right? or whatever. You know, we're not bad in a thousand. Um, jumping all the way down to number five is removing limiting beliefs, right? And I started with the idea of the calendar. Look at the training calendar. Find those pieces that you can add to your daily life that will help remove some of those fears. Some of those conversations where you're talking with your PC or Stephanie or other teammates in the office, make sure that you're putting yourself in that position to do so. Like Monica got into jujitsu. You can totally kick my butt even more now than before. And I still talk back to her. Not, not a smart guy. Because I'm, I'm overcoming quitting, so I don't know when to quit, right? I mean, so I'll just keep going until, until you know, I'm thrown on the ground or something. Um, I say that because whatever it is that we have, there's probably a training source that will eliminate it. And then we have Ignite on a recurring base. We have Flow. We have productivity coaching. We've got Fold coming up. All of these things. Believe it or not, I've been at zero three times in my real estate career. First, when I first got started in real estate. A second time when I was picked up as an ATL and, and then was fired. Uh -huh. yeah. That wasn't here. That wasn't here. Though. No, it was like a different place. And then the third time was during the pandemic, right? We had like 100,000 in GCI all canceled out. And I bring this up because every single time that we wanted to go from zero to 300,000 or zero to 150,000 and zero to a half million was Ignite. Stupid as it sounds, daily 10-4, make 10 contacts a day, send out 10. We, we eventually evolved into send out card, the 10 thank you notes or 10 thank you messages a day, 10 ads to your database or updates to your database. And at the time, it was previewing properties eventually evolved into 10 likes, five comments, one direct message, one post. Right. And that, my friends, was like the rocket launcher that took us from zero to those levels. And it sounds repetitive. It's like, oh, I've been, I've been to Ignite, I've been to Bold. What's different? Consistency. Right. Consistency. Just every day, 10 a day, just chipping away at the rock. Right. Yeah. You're going to have a day where you do a Bold 100. Immediately the next day, get back to 10. Right. Some days you might do two. Next day, do. 11 and, and eat up those days. Have those breaks that Stephanie's talking about. Revisit your why. Touch that why, right? We're, it's unfair for the parents in the room. You know, I think we, I, I heard at a mega leadership camp, I won't say the name, but they're like a local leader who said, oh, I don't know how people with kids make it. This business is not for people who have kids. And I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to throw my shoe at them. Um, and it's him. But I wanted to throw my shoe at them because I felt the other way around. I felt it was an unfair advantage for people who do have kids because we see literally our why every freaking day we wake up, right? There's like a new definition to life. You know, our fights have a new definition as well. You know, all that fun stuff. But um, again, just revisit that time block for it. Hopefully these notes help. I kind of sort of pick stuff from the book, sort of. And I'll end on this last little note. And it was like from our forward mindset call this morning. Um, or a PDR, I forget which one. Leadership is teaching people how to think the way they need to think so they can do what they need to do when they need to do it so they can get what they want when they want it. That's a, a long way of saying be a parent. All of our clients, every people that we're meeting want to be led. They don't have the headspace to think real estate. So we're actually literally teaching them that when real estate comes up, they go to one of us. They go to Cindy. They go to Monique. They go to us first before they go to Google right? That is the essence of 33 touch of the daily 10 four of staying in touch, having those campaigns, maximizing tech, all those fun things. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate the time. Maybe thank you, Philip. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do we need more? Are you guys all good? Okay. Yes, incredible stuff, and, and I'll touch on 
I'll piggyback on some of the stuff uh, that Philip was talking about, you know, just our activities when I, when I get to me. Uh, Christine Wheeler and Cindy Tan. Well, it's actually just going to be you, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a little. Do you want to give him a little snippet on the on the book club for tonight? Super quick, four o'clock. We're going to be discussing this book. All marketers are liars or <laughs> storytellers, whatever. Um, but uh, you're you're all welcome to join, whether or not you've read the book. But I do also want to highlight next month's book club on uh, June twentieth. We're going to be doing Tax Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright. An amazing book, a book you'll want to own because it's like a reference book. And I probably, and I get to lead that one as well. I'm probably going to do it sort of like a class because there's some amazing information in there that um, are, are things we should all be taking advantage of. So please, I welcome all of you to come, whether or not you read the book, but the book is available for the first time, I think, to grant this. Go for it. Um, okay, thank you. Yay. Um, well, I, I just saw Ronnie's Lakers hat. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying go Denver. Oh. Oh. No, it's so funny. I can say no. I, I probably should be a Lakers fan, but I can't do it. I lived in Sacramento for 15 years before moving to Southern California. So I was a diehard Kings fan forever. And so now with Lakers being in the playoffs, I root for everybody that's playing the Lakers. Oh, so I just, I just, and I just had to throw some fun to them. Just don't bet any money. Oh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They creamed the word. I couldn't even believe it. I was like irritated. Okay. Contract workshop this Saturday. Be there. 10 o'clock. Yes, I'll feed you. Okay. I have to. But yeah, so be there. Um, on this on the 16th, you guys do? I mean the 20th? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about it in a at what looks me after. Okay. Um all right. And then Calabas is escrow. She's busy in there. I have to tell you, it's super, super exciting that they are busy. Like they've opened eight, maybe even more already just this month in May. So they are kicking ass, taking names. So just really, you're super proud of them. And really, I'm in deep gratitude for each and every one of you utilizing our, um, our Calabas is escrow. It's, it's, it's all a team effort. Okay, our real estate safety from the safety committee. Yay, Jasmine and Ellen. Alan, are you there? Alan's here. Alan's he here. Take, he can take this one. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, Alan. Come here, darling. <laughs> wow. He's he uh, gone in. Oh. All right. Uh, hello, safety. What do we want to talk about today? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> driving at night or driving during the day, it looks different. Um, <laughs> really, so let me ask you a question. Have any of you ever driven to show an open house? Those of you who have buyers and gone to the wrong house? Yeah. Hands, please. Yeah, well, I've done that more than a couple of times. So just want to let you know. Um, Houses look different day and night, so obviously familiarize yourself, especially in areas you don't know. That can happen even, you know, anywhere you're going. You know, have a schedule. I'm sure when you're showing properties, you have a breakdown of your open house showings. <clears throat> kind of safety. It's not really a safety issue, just you know, being smart about showing properties. Uh, does anybody want to talk about something that they've seen recently that they feel that they'd like to talk about? Safety wise, okay, for all you unsafe people. <laughs> no, nothing much else for today, you guys. Be safe out there. Thank you, Jasmine. Do you want to add anything? No, I just echo the, the sentiment, and I can say in my business model, I'm working in three different counties, and a lot of the buyers I work with are now able to work remotely. So a lot of times that takes them to areas that I'm not in and out of all the time.
time and being familiar with the lay of the land before I get there, if it's an evening showing. Um, I mean, we've got daylight savings on our on our side now and it's light, you know, until 830-ish. But it's important to, to kind of know, you know, where you're going and what you're doing so that you feel comfortable. And in the same breath, you know, if business has been a little bit sparse, we tend to jump at opportunities and, and we can't have safety play second fiddle to, to that. We should always be cognizant um, regardless. That's yeah. it. Thank you, Jasmine. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah it's interesting because uh, I'm going, I, I spent part of uh, last weekend with Brittany looking at places in Huntington Beach and Long Beach and all that kind of stuff. And we're actually going to go back tomorrow and spend the night in Long Beach so we know what it looks like at night. Like, okay, because, you know, it's like, okay. You know, because no matter where, when people are moving to new places, you never, there's always a difference in behavior during night, day and night. There's good parts and bad parts. I mean, we're talking to everybody. Hey, do you live here? What's your thoughts? Da, 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 so on and so forth. And especially, you know, uh, my daughter, right? I mean, whether it's a guy or a gal, but I guess people were more protective of her. Where he's moving. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so, you know, mention that to your clients. Hey, make sure that you drive by at night, check it out too. And, you know, just see what, how, how the neighborhood is, et cetera. So there you have it. Jerry Ferris is not here. We have clear mark title. Cindy Tanden, our house fair substantial gal. Come on in. <laughs> in your stuff there. Thank you. Okay, so. Wrong word. There you go. Okay. Okay, so um, the market has been all about first time home buyers of late. But I'm tired of talking about first time home buyers. So let's talk about the old people. <laughs> so, hey, watch it. Uh, one problem with first time for first time home buyers is that they don't have anything to buy because we got all these darn old people who aren't moving out of their house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And look how many of them there are. It's a growing population. There's more and more people who are reaching the age of 65 right now than there have been in the past. So what? why do older people move? What's the number one reason? Tom Ferry said, and if boomers have to die for for new homeowners to buy. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as the number one yeah. reason is to be by their kids. Grandkids. And grandkids. And then after that, stairs. I mean, what's the big deal about stairs? The house is too big or it's too much to keep up. But despite that, one third of seniors are ready to move, would like to move, but they just simply don't know how to make it happen. Because right? here's the typical scenario. We got a 75 year old living in South Pasadena, four bedroom house valued at 1.6 million, current mortgage, they owe 300,000 and their rate is 2.99% and their monthly payment is 1756. Oh. So what's the problem? <laughs> Why can't we get them to move? Because <laughs> what do you what do you do with the scenario like that? Well, consider this: What if they found a two bedroom replacement home at about a hundred uh, one point five million, and they did a reverse mortgage and with a down payment that would be nine hundred and twenty eight thousand? They got that from the net proceeds from selling their home. They got one point one million from selling their home. They walked away with 172000 in cash. They no longer have that 1756 monthly payment. They have a zero monthly payment. And as an extra added bonus, they get to take the property value from that whatever they $300,000 home that they first bought and bring it with them to the new $1.5 million home. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yes. What is? I take a lot of uh, seniors. Not that you would know. Have had, have had reverse mortgages demonized. 
Yes. And they freaked out by them. Yes. And the families were freaked out by them. So they don't want to be arrested. Yes. And they think, you know, I'm going to take my house away from me or whatever. That's going to be a big part of a lot of people not wanting to do what's more to do. At least from the seniors I talked to, oh, my friend made this. But I'm um, I think you know, everything else seems to make sense, but I think also a lot of them too, like the year they want to move with their kids, they also want to move closer to their doctors. They want to live, they've got a community of things that they're safe with. They live in a community that they know pretty much everything about. And now they're going to be picked up. Not, and I'm not talking about 60s and 70s, we're talking like later 70s. You know, these are, are the seniors that are going to be around 70s and 80s, most likely, and you're working with their kids who are in the 50s. And they're freaked out about having to change all of the people that they've known and all of the safeness that they have in their community, even if their community is not as safe as it used to be. So they're just kind of nervous and scared about it. So we have to kind of get to them and right. provide and unless, a service and do yeah. you know. Unless they're moving to a 55 plus community that has other services around it that are similar, unless they're moving closer to their kids who are going to now supposedly take care of them. Um, but I will say, I caution, not, I would and suggest you don't use the words reverse mortgage when you talk to mm -hmm. these older people because a lot of them are afraid of it. Just be very generic about it. And I'm going to tell you why they're afraid of it. There, there's like three key reasons. One is because the original reverse mortgages pre-1980 were private loans. They were not government loans. And they were called equity share loans. So um, they really, the, when, when it came time to cash out, they got a big chunk of the pie, the, um, you know, Heirs got very little. If the house was upside down, the heirs actually got a bill. So those were bad loans. And then um, HUD took over. Um, the other reason is that uh, back before it was HUD, um, they, if you had an older husband with a young wife, young meaning under the age of um, qualifying to be on a reverse mortgage, so under 55, then she couldn't be on the loan. So he was on the loan alone. He was on title alone. He passed. He got kicked out. So that didn't work out so well. The loans, to, the reverse loans today, husband and wife, the the, the second um, spouse is protected just as much as the first. So the loan lasts until both of them are gone, not just one or the other. And the only other way that you could potentially. Yes. Um, and the only other way that you could potentially lose your home in a first mortgage is if you fail to pay your property taxes or homeowners insurance. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got to do that regardless. So we had our event on Saturday is around that. When we're having a living trust um, specialist, a, uh, a person talking about how to maximize your taxes and moving your, your tax base and their first specialist. And what blew my mind was that the tax guy said, and I, I'm not, I can't quote him necessarily, but I'm still learning it. But he said, hey, you know, in that scenario, person sells their house, doesn't even make a payment, so the interest just builds up for the next 30 years, right? Right. The heirs of his estate can take that as a tax write-off against you know, them acquiring other assets, or even a tax write-off against their own their own income when when dad finally passes away and passes the estate. So talk to the TPA about that. But there is an advantage to even not making a mortgage, you know, like uh, making the interest payment. My mom had an idea of doing the same thing and said, or as my younger brother, if you just pay the interest, cool. You know, you'll still have a house that, that's essentially at like par value, you know, 50% of, of today's equity from the market value. They'll be at par. And when I pass on, this whole house is yours, but whatever the growth of equity is, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Just help me with the interest payments. There's so right? many so ways, ways to kind of work it out. Payments are always optional. Yeah. You don't have to make them if you don't want to. And any parent who wants to do their reverse mortgage today, get, get all their equity out today and give the money to their kids so the kids can buy their own home that they want to live in. Because I have two kids. I have one home, two kids. You know, I can't, who am I get? what are they going to do with my house? They're going to sell it and get their own. 
Why wait until I'm now gone? Why not let them do that now? Well, if they can, uh, well, they don't need very much income. All they need is residual income that is enough to basically take care of us. I remember one of the times when the house was paid off, mm -hmm. she was retired, she was getting thousand dollars from the state, mm -hmm. she paid off the fifty thousand from April the time she was qualified. When was that? That was recent. Yeah, I I can't tell you, but it's, it's, it's case by case. It doesn't sound like something that would be a problem. You don't need a lot of loans. They're easy. They're, these loans are easy. Yes, take my word for it. You say don't don't mention a reverse mortgage. Yeah. But so what's the conversation? So. You might want to ask the question. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, that's a great thing. Wow. Yeah. 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 Have you been thinking about moving out of your two-story home? Any every old person is thinking about moving out of their two-story home. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Where would you go if you could? And obviously, this is the clue. Well, I got my kids. Well, I'd rather move to, I've had my eye on this 55 plus community or whatever. You know, you want to find out their motivation factor. Would a home in a different area or a smaller one or a better one or whatever, would that work better for you? And would it help if I was able to find a way for you to make that move and have it make financial sense? Everyone takes a picture of that. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> And then I put this one in parentheses. Occasionally, we get people who move here from out of state and um, they could to be by their kids and they want to find a home. And those are tough because they're bringing their measly 300,000 with them or whatever it is. And what are we going to find them? But the, they're also potential if they're older, um, potential reverse mortgage purchase candidates as well. But um, in any of these cases, once you get the conversation started, once you figure out the motivation, and the interest level, then, you know, of course, say, all right, let me give this some thought. Let me get my financial advisor, uh, consultant person to help me with this, and I'll get that. You know, if you look at the whole picture, bringing 300000 here is still like a six or $700,000 purchase. So in a reverse purchase, it's 50 percent down plus cost. So they come in with like 320000 they could buy a huge four bedroom, five bedroom, single floor home in Lancaster, yeah. almost new construction, if not new construction, yeah. and, and only have the tax and, and uh, parents yeah. kids yeah. on the house. Um, it, there's so many ways to kind of yeah. make it work. I mean, yeah, it's Lancaster, they, their goal is to be here in Calabasas. It's but, a start. It's a start. <laughs> and you know what? There, we've had conversations with, with the kids, and this is where it's like that level of leadership we were kind of um, introducing our, all of us to is like we're teaching them how to think but we're not just working one for one if you work with someone's parent you better bet that you're going to talk and especially if they have people around them you're going to talk to their trust attorney you're going to talk to their their lead child or their, their children you're going to talk to your financial advisor you're going to talk to their, their attorney and they're all going to say reverse mortgage is the worst way to go you have someone like cindy or your preferred partner cindy and you're in there and you're having this dialogue and you, you essentially influence them teach them how to think about real estate from this lens you not only won over one client you won one over five additional people and those professionals you essentially have now won over or at least got a beachhead onto their database of their core clients so when we talk about leadership we're not just in sales and selling we're also in the, in the uh, business of influencing other people to work in in our direction, in our direction, in their direction. So it's a lot of reciprocity going on there. So you have one good question for you. Why would it, what would be a case where a reverse mortgage is not really the way to go? Well, like everything else in the market, the rates on reverse mortgages have gone up and the um, qualifications have tightened to some degree. So it may not make financial sense. The numbers might, pan, might not pan out. If you're too young, you know, on the scale, because the younger you are, the less benefit you get, uh, there might not be enough equity for you. That would be one reason. I'll say also the kids don't want to sell it because they're going to inherit that house mm -hmm. and they don't want to help with the payments. And they're like, hey, mom and dad just have to eat it until, you know, until we get the house. 
Yeah. And we've, we've actually been a part of those conversations where they're just like, well, this is our house. Mm -hmm. Well, then help mom and dad have a better quality of life. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, first of all, this was brilliant. Um, you had mentioned um, on the last slide in Prop 19, and I love what, what you're bringing because everyone that is in this category tends to have a couple things in common. One, they're retired. People that are retired tend to be on fixed incomes. People that are on fixed incomes manage their household P&L tightly. So property tax at Prop 19 is a big thing. It's a big uh, talking point out there among the community. But in real estate, we have a saying, first comes God, second comes the assessor. <laughs> and that, this is true. And there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation about Prop 19. And be very careful when you're discussing Prop 19 with your prospects for your geographic farms. And, um, make sure that you know the sellable talking points, but the assessor is the one that controls this decision. Not anyone in this room does. Not an attorneys, not their CPA, the assessor. And there are some strict requirements beyond being 55 and older and being owner occupied that they're, they're adhering to. And one of them is proving owner occupancy. So before you start preaching Prop 19, get with me. I have this down to a science, and I've got a best practice that we can give you that will keep you out of trouble. Because ultimately what happens is we go out and coach, advise, educate, and then they apply for Prop 19, and the assessor declines them on a stupid technicality. Mm -hmm. And now they're calling you, saying, you said this, you said that, I listed my house, and uh, the property taxes will break my monthly household p &L. And now you're in some hot water. So if you need guidance on how to sell Prop 19 at a high level, please let me and Jamie know. Also, not to do this lesson, Jamie is so excited and allergic to Prop 19. <laughs> but on our website, benjamin.net, we've given you all a Prop 19 calculator. I have a funny saying that realtors join the real estate space because of our love of math. <laughs> but yet we do it every day. Don't get caught up in doing potential tax, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, don't don't try to calculate it. We built it for you and it matches the assessors identi uh, identically. So if you go on benandjamie.net under technology, right there, you will see Prop 19 calculator that you can give your clients access to and allow them to run scenarios. <laughs> print it out and they can have it and they won't come back at you and say, hey, you said, you said, you said. So this is fantastic. This is an amazing strategy. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, last words on this is that um, when it comes to reverse mortgages, I never sell them. I do them. I never sell them because either the numbers work, the math looks good, it makes sense, and it, it's a great thing for the client. And all I am doing is, doing is educating them of that fact, and then they'll do the loan with me. Or it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work, and no, this isn't the right moment for you. So it's not a sale. I love so it. The property has to be paid off or kind of the first mortgage as well. No, you can have a first mortgage, but you have to have significant equity, at least 50% equity. So, yeah. You can search that by city or if you have a farm, you can search uh, like empty nesters and people that don't have a full amount of property. So if you have a specific area, that's where I can. Thank you guys. Oh, wow. Thank you, Cindy. Oh yeah. Remember our Bahamas trip. All right, so uh, Lisa Donovan is the one that's going to be um, to, uh, making the deposits, all that kind of stuff. So right now you can put 50% down, right? 50% down on it. And then the final payment is due by August 24th or 27th. I have it on the, on the flyer. Um, rates are subject to change. It could go lower, they could go higher. But if you put your deposit in now, then it's locked into that rate. So it includes um, all air for, air for, air fare tra and transportation. It's an all-inclusive adult only 
So you have to, if you're bringing your kids, like I'm bringing my kids, but there are 18 in the door. <laughs> it was so funny. Eileen, where did she go? Eileen was trying to get me to go to uh, this place, Bungalows in Huntington Beach. So I called them like, hey, you know, want to make reservations? She goes, oh, it's a 500 minute spend. spend. I'm like, okay. I'm sitting there thinking, oh, we're not going to spend that much. Like, why? I don't think my kids are going to drink that much on a Sunday <laughs> or maybe ever. That's not true either. Um, but at least not that day. And she goes, oh, well, they have to be 21 and over. And I'm like, oh, these are still my kids. They're 24. And it's my baby. So um, can you tell I'm on a roll of my kids right now? <laughs> like that. Um, so anyway, but the, go, oh, let's go. We have so much fun. We had a great time in Cabo last year. We had a great time in Cancun the year before. So we decided to, uh, mix it up a little bit and go to the Bahamas instead. So I would love all of you to go, um, again, the book club tonight, please, especially for those, uh, new go to the ignite. We have the ignite program. That's every morning at 10 AM on zoom. And then um, I'm rescheduling my contract workshop. And then uh, broker tours always at 11. And our next flow coaching is at Friday. 10 o'clock on Friday. Okay, I think I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, no, I have, I have no time at all. Excuse me. Contract on Saturday. I, I'm kidding. I'm going to reschedule it. So I'll send out a dedicated email. I didn't have, they have a uh, seminar going on on Saturday and I didn't have it in my calendar. So I will give you, keep you guys posted on that. Okay, I am not gonna, let me see. I just gonna bring up a couple things and then we'll let you guys go. But really, um, right now, just really in our market, just love the challenge right? And embrace the market that we have. There is plenty of business out there for each and every one of you, regardless of, you know, just be careful what your mind is buying into, right? We talk about this a lot about, you know, you guys get to uh, believe whatever story that you're, that you're stating. But um, I, one of the things I wrote down here is when when um, when we have to maybe work harder or be more intentional or purposeful, et cetera, sometimes we try to control how it happens. We try to control the who, the how, the what, the why, et cetera. You only can control the controllables, right? You only can control you and your mindset and your mind and your intentionality when you're going out there, out there working. So just be careful of what you're buying into Right. And um, I'm also coaching agents now on doing the right activities on the right activities in your day, because a lot of times you, know, you got to be careful about, oh, I'm so busy. OK, well, what are you busy doing? Right? Did that come across a little whatever? But I mean, that's true, right? You can be, oh, my God, I'm so tired, but you didn't do one income producing activity all flipping day. Right, you can get you can get so sucked into the minutia that you're not moving forward. You know, I was having a conversation with someone last week, and she's like, "I'm spinning my wheels. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not getting any traction." So, two things that are that are possible in how she's feeling. One, because she's been working her ass off, and there are certain things I'm just like, "Okay, what are you doing? Tell me the activities that you're doing. Where are you spending money? What are you doing? Like, oh, I'm just going to go do this. I'm, gonna do I'm like." No, I told her, I said, you have to track everything that you're doing for a week and then we'll reconvene and then I'll tell you, hell no, hell yes, da da da, 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 da. don't spend money on that. If you're going to do it one and done, don't even do it the first time, right? So you guys can be um, efficient and effective with your work, you know, because last thing you want to do is just be just spinning your will. And the other thing too is building the momentum. So the other side of that too, when you're, when you're busy and a lot, some things aren't breaking, you know, or not breaking it, you know, but just, uh, uh, deals coming to fruition. Right. And it's just, sometimes you're trying to control how it happens. Just do the work and the results will come. And if you're trying to control when the results are coming, you will build this wall of resistance. 
and it will take longer to get to you. So as soon as you relinquish control, embrace the chaos and just and and, and allow the business to come to you, then it will come to you faster. But the moment that you're starting trying to control everything, forget about it. Forget about it. It will just be uh, faced with resistance. So I know I'm meeting scheduling time with uh, Tara Lynn. I'm scheduling time with this other gentleman, Stephen, um, to just go through and really uh, dissect what you're doing on a daily basis. But you guys have to be honest with yourselves regarding tracking what you're doing, right? If you're just like, oh, I spent an hour and a half on Instagram, okay, well, we'll talk about that, you know, but put it down. Don't put things down just to make it look better to you or to me or to your accountability partner. Right, it's all yes. I can add something. Our, one of our coaches said that the average top producer is, is, is about hitting 38 minutes a day of each generation. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's hard to, for me to believe that all of us collectively are averaging four hours a day of each end. Yeah, we were really doing that. I mean, yeah. we got it up, right? I mean, even me, I have two hours, two and a half hours worth of time blocks that are dedicated to each end, and I'm not hitting the full 30 minutes. I'm probably getting 10. Solid minutes out of thirty, maybe fifteen minutes, plenty at the most. So even with even with the, the discipline and the, the time blocking schedules, even I get off course. So like my two and a half, three hour time block throughout the day for that specific case, I'm probably only getting like maybe that forty five minutes to an hour and fifteen at most, right? So when you start really looking at those gaps and you start realizing, okay, maybe I should delete really the games off my phone. <laughs> you know, like okay, maybe I should like you know have a time block for Facebook and Instagram or anything. Mm -hmm. Right, and you start eliminating those things. Like maybe I shouldn't take a call from the agent at this time, so I can work on the agent. You know, so that then you start optimizing your schedule. It, like Stephanie says, it really does start with honesty. And even if you do show up and you're doing four hours of TikTok, hey, at least you can start chipping away at that. Mm -hmm. right? So off yeah. you go. Unless you're creating a ton of content. Well, yeah, I mean, it has to go ahead. Yeah, with a lot of the newer agents, there's there's some low hanging fruit, and then there's stuff that takes a lot of time to cultivate. Some of the things that you guys should definitely be doing is going through your database and creating um, a, uh, uh, like what's, what's the one that no, the one that we have here that's built in. Just put your your Google Gmail account to command and that, go through each and every one of those contacts. Say you have a thousand contacts in your phone. Delete all the crap ones that are say like, oh, this is my uh, my bank or this is this. Go strictly to human beings with your phone number and your email address, and then and then tag them pro properly. Say, okay, this is a, a lead prospect. This is a lender realtor. This and, and, and hone it down to specifics, and then you can send out contacts or emails to these people on a, every every couple of weeks. So they so you're staying in in, in front of them. It's like because you don't want to be a secret agent. I'm for a secret agent, but I'm just saying for everybody else that. I think it's the right way. Yeah. By the way, this does not happen overnight. Going through your database yeah. is a long term, it's like weeks and months of pain and effort. Like, oh, I can't stand doing this again. You need to get four or five names through it and get like your last name, your phone number, anything you can find on them. You never got it. I got to be honest, you know, I've been in this business a long time, Steve's been a long time. That was one of my biggest regrets that in my beginning of my career, I did not and really wasn't pushed as much the database. Mm -hmm. It is a savior for so many long term. When you start getting three, four, five, six years in this, and hoping most all of you get there, it is a place that will continually bring business to you and you will become mostly a referral agent, which is Nice place to be. As an example, I just recently downloaded my my phone contacts information. Reed helped me import it into contact, and I had 3,112 contacts in my phone. And I deleted all the crap that was not an actual human being with a phone number, email address, and it's down to 1,914. So I, I, I got rid of over 11 or 1,200 uh, uh, numbers in my phone. And now I'm literally taking like a half an hour a day because it's just a daunting task to go through and, and eliminate. Is this a person? Is this a person I want to send something to? 
good way you can get a list of maybe a couple hundred people in each category that you want to send something to every three weeks, and you need to do that so that they, they stay fresh in your mind because nothing's going to drive you fucking crazier to find out that that one of your close friends or family members listed their house with someone else instead of you. You're, what the? You're going to get so mad. Why didn't you list it with me? And guess what? It's it's our call. Yeah. Because it's our job to, to stay top of mind. And what Stephen and, and Alan and Stephanie are talking about is, you know, if you just have a, a group of people sitting in a database doing nothing with it, that's a database. But what they're talking about is taking your database and turning it into a data bank. So if you don't do it, you're competitive. And you've got tons of talent in this office that will help you get that. Yeah. No, but it's true. It's and, and please understand that this business, you know, to to everyone's point, it's a process. It's a process. So just understand that that it's always going to be evolving. You're always going to be cleaning up. You're going to be deleting. You're going to do this. You're going to change that. Da da da. But it's just a matter of start doing it, and then be okay with the chaos on the other side. You know, make sure you're continually doing your income producing activities on a daily basis, and then you work on you know reaching out to your people, and and it just it just it happens. So really, I'm just going to say a couple more things, then we'll we'll end it. So you just have to learn how to be proactive, right? Looking for business, not waiting for it to show up. We have to go after it, right? And then really ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your momentum right now? How would you rate your momentum right now? And then the other thing is, uh, so that means looking at the big picture, calling, texting, videos, open houses, and ranking whether or not that they're working to generate business every day. And then how would you rate your skills on a, on a scale of one to 10, right? How would you rate your skill? So, you know, really need to recognize that if you can honestly rate yourself a nine or a 10 in momentum and skills, then it's not the market that is an issue. You're losing money due to lack of activities and skills. So if your business isn't where you want it to be, then you really have to take an honest look at yourself and what, what you're doing on a daily basis. And really, and it's all, you guys hear me say this at nausea, it's being persistent and consistent. I don't care if you make, you know, let's say you're working five days a week and you're, you're supposed to do uh, 20 contacts a day and 20 new contacts a day, right? Not just repeating, rinse and repeat every day, right? So let's say you're supposed to do that. Let's say you get, I use this example all the time. Wednesday at five o'clock, you're like, oh shit, I didn't do it. And we haven't made any contacts yet. Make a couple. Don't just go to bed at zero, make a couple, shoot a couple texts, make a couple phone calls. Then next day you can start, you know, because each day we start at zero. So just continue to be intentional, purposeful, really understand where you're at. So I'll leave it there. Um, we're having a team meeting, Memorial Day style. I know, thank you guys for adjusting for the month of May. So we're doing it a different instead of the second and fourth as always. But after Memorial Day, I'm sure you guys are going to be tired of the, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, baked beans, potato salad, but we're going to have it on Tuesday, right? And whatever else that you want to bring in. So you can sign up at the front desk for whatever you'd like to bring in for our Memorial Day. We're going to have an exciting panel as well. Don't forget about our, um, uh, our real estate school. For those of you that don't have Michael Lewis Marketing Suite, go see Bree. And that's the end. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So Gus always has given us a treat if anybody wants to go this weekend uh, to Boogie Nights with the Windbreakers at the Candy Club. So we have free tickets. So if you guys want to uh, go, come see me. I have tickets for you. Um, so thank you, Gus, for your generosity with that. And uh, new agent lender training for 15 minutes. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Have a powerful party today. Love you all. Welcome back. Oh, thank you.